and welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren. Today I'm going to be talking about the 1938 gothic novel Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier as well as the two film adaptions based on that work. Rebecca is written by an English author and it primarily takes place in the British countryside at this massive estate called Manderley. This story follows the journey of a very young woman who marries an older man who is a widow and he is extremely wealthy and once they are married she moves into his estate. So this is where things get a little wild and mysterious because she finds out that not only the estate itself but her husband is haunted by his late wife, Miss De Winter, AKA Rebecca. I have been making a concerted effort this year to try to read more classic horror novels. I wanna make sure that I'm exploring the kind of forefathers, the grandmothers of the more contemporary modern works of horror today. I just find that really intriguing to see how the genre itself has developed and evolved over time and how like more historical or political influences have really shaped what it becomes. And I think this work is really special because there wasn't really the horror genre that we know today when this book came out in the late 1930s. I mean, I don't even think it was marketed in any kind of like spooky way. I think it really leaned on the more romance aspects of this story and I don't find it to be a romance at all and I'll get into that. What I find so fascinating is the debates around how to categorize this book. It was categorized at the time as more of like a gothic romance but I definitely see people putting it in the category of horror. And then you also have people who refer to it as like a domestic thriller. It's a romance suspense novel. It's so much up for debate. And I feel like I got the gothic vibes. I didn't get the romance, but I did see some like kind of horror elements at play a little bit when you see kind of like the characterization of the book's namesake, Rebecca. In Paperbacks from Hell, which is a history book of sorts written by Grady Hendrix, which details the rise of horror fiction in the 70s and 80s, he talks about how Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca was like on the top best sellers list for books until you have it knocked off by Rosemary's Baby, The Other, and The Exorcist. So I think it really speaks to the hold that Rebecca had on the public and how it was like as close to horror as you could get for that time that like mainstream publishers were providing the public. You also have a story in here that Hendrix details of an ace editor who found that his mom was reading Rebecca for like the millionth time in like 1959. He asked why she was reading a book from 1938 Honey, she said, they don't write like that anymore. And according to Hendrix, this is where you have like the beginning of the reemergence of like gothic horror novels that will then segue us into those like unholy trinity books in the late 60s, early 70s, kickstarting what will become the like mass paperback production of horror that he kind of gets into more here. Another reason to read this classic novel is that it transgresses these like gender norms for the time period. And it has really interesting social commentary regarding gender, sexuality, that I think is still incredibly relevant. You do see some kind of like queer tones in this book within the relationship of Miss Danvers and Rebecca that people have theorized might like be alluding to them having some kind of like romantic relationship when she was alive. So those kind of things are really fascinating to read and think about and consider how the author as a woman was using literature as a way to kind of comment on these things and showcase the dark sides of women's lives and the limitations they had during this time period. I found this novel to be extremely accessible in its language, although I have come across reviews of people who say the prose is like really difficult. I don't know if it had anything to do with the fact that I had watched the 2020 film adaptation that was on Netflix first before going into this book that might have helped me a little bit feel like I had the visuals prior to reading the text. I did go into both the movie and the book hoping for a little bit more of like the paranormal side 
to show through. I mean, you get that creepy vibe. You do get a lot of like atmosphere from this book, but I did wish there was like a little bit more. But for what it was, I found it to be really fascinating, especially when you think and consider this idea of like what a haunting is and what it can be beyond just like the paranormal. And I think that's something that comes up in a lot of the books I like that the aspects of what haunts us doesn't necessarily have to be this like Casper the friendly ghost. Like who really needs ghosts when patriarchy is scary enough? So for a classic, I found this to be a fantastic read. I give this four out of five stars. I definitely preferred it to the screen adaptations. It's kind of hard for me to rate and compare the two main film adaptations that I feel like get attributed to this book the most the 2020 Netflix film, and then the 1940 film directed by the infamous and iconic Alfred Hitchcock. The film adaptations themselves, I thought were very intriguing in their own ways, and I do think they had their own downsides as well. I do think I prefer the book to the films. I know a lot of people really dislike the 2020 version and I totally get it. However, um, I was really enraptured by the clothing of Miss De Winter, the main character that we see the story through. I want her wardrobe. I want all that in my closets. But other than that, I did feel like the Mr. De Winter, the Maxim character, who is the love interest, I guess you could say, of the main heroine of the story. I think he was not well casted by Army Hammer in the more recent version versus Laurence Olivier in the 1941. There needs to be that age gap and there really wasn't in the more recent one. I know the 2020 version really wanted to speak to more modern audiences. So you see the characterization of the second wife, Miss De Winter, being a little bit more modern, which doesn't lend itself to a lot of like character development over time. So I think that really changes the story in so many ways that it might as well be like a totally different story. I did think that the 2020 version did give me a little bit more of that like spooky vibe that I really wanted, but I don't think that the story itself there made a lot of sense because I think they changed the characters a little too much for it to have the same kind of pull on me as the book does. Something that really stuck out to me as I was watching these movies, but also primarily when I was reading the book, is the marriage between Miss De Winter and Maxim De Winter. I took so many notes. I was just stopping constantly to comment on like their toxic relationship, really like suffocatingly strict world that these women exist within and how they're like so much against each other as women and they're like kind of being pitted up against each other. It just said so much about patriarchal structures and the very limited choices women had to have the lives that they wanted. I feel like in many ways, Daphne du Maurier created those like three female characters to demonstrate the three kind of life paths. People generally had options to pursue as women in that time, as like specifically white women in wealthy spaces. You're either gonna be that pure, sweet, innocent young woman who was very modest, very much the image of respectability for women at that time. Or you could kind of color outside of the lines and be more of a Rebecca, where you are this sultry woman who is a husband stealer, home wrecker, living the life that you want at all costs, being demonized for that, for having like unregulated sexuality and that being seen as like a moral downside. Option number three is to be a Miss Danvers where you do not have your life and your life is made to be in service of other people and you don't really have a sexuality. You are just there to help other people to serve other people. Miss De Winter, who doesn't even get a first name in this story, is living so much in the shadow of Rebecca and really feeling haunted by her. So because the Miss De Winter feels like she is failing to meet the standard of perfect ideal womanhood, she feels like she fails as a wife, therefore as a woman. The main problem in this story is never the actual problem, which is Maxim's like avoidant toxic behavior, it is Rebecca. Miss Winter is constantly walking on eggshells around her husband, trying to avoid getting him mad, setting him off in any way, giving him like any kind of negative emotional experience, which is incredibly like frightening to have to experience when you're also in this like very isolated castle, basically by yourself with very few confidants to lean on. So much of the motivation of Miss Winter hinges 
on her fears of rejection, being rejected by her husband, being rejected by society. She has so few family members in her life. And so she's basically out in the world on her own, having to figure out her economic security, her emotional happiness. And so I personally feel like she settles. She hyper fixates on so many of her actions. And I don't think there's really any point in the story that she considers how Maxim can be a better, more effective, healthier, productive, partner for her. Like she would get mad at herself for asking about his previous wife and what happened there and how it is impacting him in that present moment. So this really leads her to that one like crucial turning point in the story, which I will not divulge because I'm trying to keep this spoiler free. When that turning point does happen within the plot, you see that Mr. Winner is like ready and waiting to showcase to Maxim just how much of a great wife and romantic partner that she can be. Ultimately, I found the story to be really tragic. And I think being able to see that not much has changed is frightening. So yes, I call this a horror novel. If you've read Daphne du Maurier's book or you've seen any of these screen adaptations, I'd love to know what you thought about them. If you like this video, definitely check out my reading vlog of Jaws, another really important foundational classic horror novel right here in this video. I'll see you all there. Bye.